In March of 2012, the Del Monte Forest Foundation changed its name to the Del Monte Forest Conservancy. This new name more clearly reflects the organization's purpose to perpetuate, maintain, and enhance the beautiful character of the Del Monte Forest through ownership of land and oversight of scenic easements. Reference to the foundation in the following program refers to the conservancy as it is now known. The Del Monte Forest is a unique preserve and we'd like to think that people come here because they like the environment and want to maintain the environment and understanding the history can help encourage that belief that it really does need to be preserved. What makes the Del Monte Forest interesting historically is that it was originally developed as a park preserve. When the Pacific Improvement Company bought the Monterey Peninsula in 1880, they identified this area as a park preserve. They built the 17-mile drive in 1881, later what they called the 40-mile or the 50-mile drive, which gave you the scenic loop up into the hills. But it was always intended to be a forest that people could enjoy. When Sam Morse came on as the property manager for Pacific Improvement Company, he was really looking for how to make the most money for the company. But he fell in love with the Monterey Peninsula, and he ended up buying it himself and ran Pebble Beach for 50 years. The company was started in 1919. I was born in 1920. So I came along with Del Monte Properties. I grew up on the 18th hole of the golf course. My father decided that he didn't want to liquidate the holdings, that he really wanted to get a group behind it and buy it. He wanted to preserve the coastline. His vision was that you could build houses up on the hills that could be nestled in among the trees, build golf courses to preserve the coastline and keep it open for everybody to enjoy and do the things in the forest that allowed for the preservation. I'm very proud of the fact that without my father, it wouldn't exist as it is today. There were three entities here in the forest, all having to do with protection of the territory in one way or another. The Pebble Beach Company, the uh, Del Monte property owners, and then they formed this forest foundation. It's a way for people to donate to help conserve the land. What we want is to have as many trees as possible that naturally grow. Here. And the far-reaching effort is to maintain the forest. And that takes a lot of work and takes a lot of money. You have to have people that know what they're doing. This is the beginning of the Monterey Pine Forest as you come in off of the ocean. It basically has this function of kicking up the wind as it comes off the ocean and protects all the forest and forest habitat behind it. Now, Monterey Pine only grows three places on the California coast, the native places where they grow, Monterey, Año Nuevo, and Cambria. And the forest front here was absolutely solid when I first started working for the foundation in 1993. And about that same time, pitch canker first arrived on the Monterey Peninsula. In the mid-80s, they suddenly noticed that all these trees were having dead branch tips all over the place. And then all the tops of the trees would start to die. And then some individual trees started to die. So they started to, they tried to find out what it was and cultured out this fungus that was the problem. A lot was known about it in the southeast, but it had never been in California before. And therefore, the local trees didn't have much resistance to it. This was solid trees going up 70, 80, 90 feet in the air. Within 
10 years, you can see what had happened. It was so concerning that they created a pitch canker task force, and the foundation was intimately involved with that research right from the beginning because of the concern that we might lose the Monterey pine forests here. The, the positive side of this story is that all of these young trees that you see here have grown up in the presence of pitch canker. Some of them are natural regeneration from the trees you see there. The rest of them are planted trees that the foundation developed by growing seedlings from the trees that showed resistance. We tested them, selected the ones that were resistant to pitch canker, and we think that in another 15 years or so, we'll have a pretty solid uh, set of trees here uh, kicking the wind up and protecting the forest behind it again. This is owned by the Del Monte Forest Foundation. It's one of the many parcels that they own throughout the Del Monte Forest. These uh, old growth uh, native Monterey Cypress are very rare uh, in the world and in California. There are actually only two stands here. This is one and the other is at Point Lobos. And it's evidence really that management of lands by the Del Monte Forest Foundation guarantees that those properties will be maintained as open space in perpetuity. These trees were planted by my grandfather, planted I believe in the 30s, they're, they're now 70 plus years old. In the 19, late 1920s and early 30s, my grandfather, L.W. Hill Sr., bought this property and it's been in the family and about 1998, I donated it as a final bequest of my father's to the Del Monte Forest Foundation. I actually had people knocking on my doors wanting to buy it from me for millions and I said no, my father's last request was for this to go to the foundation. So. This has been under the stewardship of the foundation now for about 10 or 12 years. They're gonna keep this 4.8 acres restricted or not accessible to the public, and keep this as an example of what it would look like if nobody touched it. The Del Monte Forest attracts everybody. But Morse also always envisioned Pebble Beach as a sports empire. Uh, in the early days, it included polo and horse racing, but golf has been king since Morse was able to get the USGA to come west for the 29 US Amateur. And the PGA comes here every year now since 1947, when it began as the Bing Crosby National Pro-Am, then became the AT&T, and has been played every year since. And we've had five US Opens. Here's some early race posters. Uh, the car racing was short-lived in the 50s, but from it we got the Concord Elegance that continues to this day and attracts people from around the world. There's just so many special events and they all come, enjoy the environment of the Del Monte Forest, and they bring great benefits to the entire community because millions of dollars a year go to charities from the events held here at Pebble Beach. In the Girl Scouts. We spent a lot of time doing arts and crafts and learning about plants and animals and we had our brownie investiture here where we got our little pin and um, we planted a bunch of trees out by the cabins. This is really a natural forest and riding around on horseback on this, these trails, I've just grown to love it. But why my generation should care? Probably just that, you know, it's not just there to be looked at. You want to go out and play in it and walk through it and interact with it. I feel so fortunate to live in a place where you can go for a walk and experience nature in so many different ways. At some times of the year, this whole area is just green and fresh and just verdant, and you can feel life coming up. But I see beauty in it as it is now, just as it starts to turn brown. It's sort of like suntan shoulders. 
I like to see what kind of wildflowers are, have come up. I'm always looking for wildlife. Are there little baby deer around? Sometimes we get to see maybe a fox. There's so much to learn from what we have here. The Forest Foundation is responsible for some of the most unique botanic resources in California. Dune habitats, Monterey cypress habitats, and Monterey pine forest habitat. We've impacted where we live enough that we have to take some responsibility for how it proceeds from here. And that's what the foundation does, is make sure that the legacy that we're given is there for our children to have and enjoy the way we've been able to.